welcome back to Our Life Simplified. Hi, my name is Laura, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about something that I've become a huge fan of, and they are green stocks. Anybody who has been in gardening for any period of time, you've probably heard of this. The green stock is a vertical gardening system, um, it's, and the beauty about this is when you water, there's a water reservoir up top. This is where you water, and it waters every layer. So this green stock is what I had from last year. So I've, I've been through it an entire year, and I'm going to share with you my experiences with it. One of my favorite features about this is, number one, it's a container garden. You can have it on your porch, um, on your back deck, or, you know, close to your house where it's easy access to come and collect whatever it is you're growing in here. And you can grow anything in here. I happen to grow strawberries. Uh, I know in the past I've had bad experiences growing strawberries because they just, I probably didn't know what I was doing and the bed was too far away. I probably didn't water it as often as I should have and it just didn't succeed. Uh, like I would have liked it to. I don't think I got any strawberries, maybe really tiny ones. So last year I decided I wanted to try my hand at strawberries again using the green stalks. This particular one I have had in my garage all winter long. I purchased it with the casters so that I could wheel it around. Now if you notice there are several pockets that they that didn't. they didn't survive but to be fair I only watered this maybe twice all winter long but if you can see there is a lot of pockets that have growth if I can find the picture I will show you what my green stock looked like last year when it was completely full of strawberries it was absolutely beautiful and it was cascading over like a waterfall with all these beautiful green leaves and they had so many runners on it so what I decided to do is purchase another green stock, which I happened to get in on a deal over the holidays to be waiting for me in the spring. And what I was going to do is I was going to use my second green stock as an overflow for any runners that I got out of my first green stock. Fast forward to this year, Valentine's Day, my husband bought me two different types of strawberries and they had 40 plants in each and I now realize that my one green stock I bought for overflow was not enough to fill my two different packages that had 40 of each plants so then I went out and I purchased a second green stock so I'm going to show you the unboxing how I put it together how I mix my soil and what I put in my soil and the planting of my strawberries. Okay, so here are my two boxes. Um, while I am unboxing this and kind of going through what comes with these planters, I have my strawberries, at least one of the packages, I have the, the plants um, soaking in water to get it ready for the planting, which I'll show you that after I do the unboxing. So it looks like, and I don't know, I think this one is maybe one that I purchased over the holidays because it came with a little gift box and I haven't seen one in this one yet. Um, it comes with a little bag and then it has information that talks about the vertical planter instructions. So you'll want to sit and read this prior to doing anything and it kind of breaks it down as to what all the pieces are and how to piece the unit together. Since I've already done this last year, I'm kind of familiar with it, but I will definitely make reference back to this because it's been about a year. But I'm a huge fan of the green stalks just because of the ease, the space it takes up, and how easy it is to water. And I know that by watering on top, it's gonna water every single hole on every single level. So they have the instructions, they throw in, these are a couple of stickers that you can place on your green stalks. Oh, here's another one. Good chives only. And then they throw in a free pack of seeds. This one happens to be uh, kale. 
and they send you a thank you. Thank you for choosing our small family business. It means the world to us. And I'm curious to see what the little gift is. So, oh, so it was at Christmas. They sent out a little ornament. In this other box, it has a paper envelope and says, open me. It has similar items. There's the different stickers. Again, you can stick on the green stock. Absolutely radishing. And then this one happened to come with carrots for the seeds. I think I ordered the leaf on both of them. It's been a while, so I'm gonna have to go through and look. And it tells you, what's nice is it has a section in here that describes you what you can grow in the green stocks. I love this. You can grow anything. I'm not sure how on some of the things because of the plants get so big, like tomato plants or whatever, but I guess they have extensions that you can add to it. For my purposes, I'm growing strawberries. I might, if I have a couple pockets that are left open, like if I don't get enough quality um, strawberry plants to plant and I have a few extra openings, I'll probably add some herbs, maybe. I was thinking maybe some mint and um, possibly chives. I don't know, we'll go ahead, we'll see. We'll start with this one. So the base, I ordered the base that has wheels. And I think I saw some of the casters that were in there. I think the casters, even though it cost a little bit extra, I love having anything on wheels, especially when it's heavy, so that I can move it anywhere, such as whenever it was time for the winter, I moved it into the garage. Uh, you also, you, whenever I have the planter up against the house, there's times you need to rotate it around. I do know they have another base. I think they call it a spinner base, just a circle. Like it just, there's no casters on the bottom. You can just rotate it around. But you do really need to have some type of a base so that even if you use just the spinner, um, you have that opportunity to move the plants around in case you have your vertical planter up against your house. That way it gives the opportunity for every plant to get some. This is the top, the water reservoir. These are the reservoirs that are in between each level that will hold the water. And I don't know if you can see, there are holes all around the outside. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. So the water will travel down through here, drop in this tray, and then it will drip down through the hole as it's setting like this, it'll drip down. Okay, so here are the casters and the tubing. So it comes in the bag. All the casters come in a bag. This is the plastic tubing and this tubing will be connected to this part of the mover base. So that, because this is gonna be the very bottom in any so, final or extra water that drips on this bottom plate, it will drain through this tube. This, I do use this all the time in my other planter. Okay, so I will just place the wheel in the hole and press in and that's it. And I will continue doing this until it's all pieced together. Okay, um, on the casters, there are three of them that have a locking device, a locking mechanism. So when you don't want it to roll, you just press it down and you just need to, every other one is the ideal, probably where you need to place the locking casters. Comes with a total of six, so three of them are locking casters. And if you opt to not have this tube on here, it comes with this little plug and you just place it right in the hole there and you can plug it up. But I like mine to drain. I don't want any sitting water They have six, six sections in each, so enough for six different plants in terms of strawberries. It explains 
that each tier holds six gallons or 0.75 cubic feet of potting soil for each of the leaf planters, which that's what I purchased, the leaf planters. They're the shorter ones. Um, the original, I think, were the... Okay, so the leaf planters, they are seven inches or tall, seven inches deep. The original planters, which I think that might be what I have outside, I'll have to double check. They are 10 inches deep. So that would be great for things like carrots, things that require deeper roots. But since I'm just planting strawberries in mine, the leaf planter was totally fine, the seven inches. If you have the original planter that was 10 inches deep, it says that each tier holds eight gallons or one cubic foot of potting mix. So that's just kind of an idea. I'll know whenever I mix mine. I, I mean, I'm not gonna measure it, weigh it. I'll figure it out as I'm planting how much I think I need. Because you really, you have to bring the soil up pretty high. I will piece these together. So we start with the base. I'm gonna go ahead and just piece them together. I'll have to take them back off in order to do the, in order to do the planting, which I'll show you the planting after this. So it just sets right in here. And then you place the gray disc right on top of there. Now, again, I'm just piecing this together just to kind of show you how it goes together before I do the planting. When I piece this in here, I'm gonna make sure there's gonna be, all the dirt will be in each of these planters. And I always make sure that the dot in the disc is facing the hole in which the plant will be planted, which I'll plant the plant like right around this area. On the bottom of each of these, there's a little notched area, which will guide you as to how to stack on the planter below it. And as you can see, it fits right in between these two. And you know you have it on correctly when each of those notches are properly set. What I'm going to do now, that was just a demonstration as to how to piece it together, but what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to mix the soils that, um, I have a garden soil in a bag, I'll show you um, everything that I'm gonna mix together. I'm gonna use peat moss, garden soil, and berry town for a slow release fertilizer. So this is what I'm going to use. This is what I just happen to have. It is a miracle Grow garden soil for in-ground use. Now, because this is gonna be in a container, I'm gonna to have to do something to it, uh, to amend it, to make it fluffier. I don't want this compact being in a container. So I'm going to be adding some peat moss. And then as part of the mix, I'm going to be adding this organic, it's called berry tone. So it has all the nutrients for um, fruit and berry type foods or berry type plants. And it's a slow release. So that's ideal for all blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just slice open this bag. Uh-oh, we got mushrooms growing in here. It's actually a good sign. It means it's pretty uh, fertile. So this bag is a 1.5 cubic feet of soil. And I'm gonna be adding peat moss. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna try to do equal parts. Peat moss to the dirt. So I'll probably put about one third of this bag in here because this bag is three cubic feet. Uh, I know it was saying approximately, or the bag, the soil was one and a half cubic feet. Just put about a third of this in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix it up with my hands, the soil with the pea moss, or you could use a shovel. Okay, so that was a little bit of effort um, because the bags of soil that I had had been sitting outside and it rained yesterday. So, it, <laughs> It was a little moist, which was actually good because the peat moss was in the garage and not moist. And I think the combo of the two makes it perfect. Anyways, now that it's all mixed together, I feel like fairly well. Um, I am going to go ahead and add probably about a cup of the berry tone. 
that stuff smells amazing, let me tell you. Okay, so I'm just estimating that's probably about a cup right there. Don't breathe the fumes. So I'm gonna mix that in really well, and then I'm going to show you how I place them in each of the containers. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure you subscribe so you can continue watching videos like these. These are the strawberries I am planting today. The White Carolina strawberry, which is also known as a pine berry, and supposedly it's supposed to taste like a pineapple and a strawberry mix. If any of you have ever grown these, I am curious to see or hear from you as to if they really do taste like a mix between a pineapple and a strawberry. Please comment below and let me know. And the other one is called an all-star strawberry. And if I forget to mention, there is a $10 off purchase for you if you choose to purchase any of these green stocks um, that is with an order of $75 or more. I will post the link in the comments below. Okay, so the first step is fill and plant. You're going to fill each planter to the top with the high quality potting soil mix and plant each pocket with the starter plant or seeds. I started filling this planter in with soil and once I get it to the level that it needs to be at, I will go ahead and show you the planting part. So as you noticed, I planted them pretty high to the top and I slightly compressed the soil. I do know from experience that as time goes on, the soil levels get compressed. I will go ahead and show you how I plant my strawberries, making sure that the crown of the strawberry plant is at soil level. Okay, so looking at this plant, you can see there's the roots right here. The crown is right here. The crown is right here and you can see the leaves starting to grow up in this area. So I'm gonna plant the soil right at crown level. So it's kind of hard to tell because they're so dark, but I went ahead and I planted all six strawberry plants for this level. I am no expert at strawberry growing, but I do know that you are not supposed to bury the crown because it will kill the plant. That's why I explained the crown needs to be at soil level. Like I can feel the crown right here. So, and it's right at soil level. Step two is stack. So we're gonna place the gray disc on top of each tier on the soil level, and we're gonna line up the holes with each pocket. Stack each tier, making sure the planter's feet interlock with the planter below. So I have the disc. All I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it over this. And it just basically sets in there and I'm going to make sure that each of the holes are lined up with the pocket. So here's a hole and there's the pocket. So I'm just lining it up with each of the, each of the pockets. And if you align with one pocket, it will align with all the rest. So I'm not going to stack them yet. I found that it is, is easier that I fill each tier with the soil and the plants, whatever I plan on planting in it first, and then I will stack them all at the end. I'm gonna continue this process until I have all the tiers filled with soil and strawberry plants in them. Just a quick note, I just got the first four tiers filled and that was all using that first bag of soil, garden soil, and about a third of the bag of peat moss. So that's good news. I'm going to make up one more batch, and that should finish out the last three tiers. And then I will show you the final step. Then I'll show you how to stack, and then the final step, which would be watering 
So I ended up getting five of them filled with the strawberry plants, but I don't know if you've ever purchase the strawberry plants that were dormant. Even though it, they may say that there are 40 root plants, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have 40 good root plants. So I have two more tiers that I'm just gonna fill up with the soil. I'm going to, I'm going to add them as the bottom two tiers and I will probably plant some herbs in them. Uh, like I had discussed before, such as maybe mint or chives or something along those lines. So I went ahead and I stacked all of the tiers. Like I said, the bottom two tiers are empty right now, but the other five tiers have strawberry plants in them. And these are the All Star. This is the strawberry that I planted in this green stock. Just make sure when you do the stacking, You'll know you have it approximately correct when you have these two pockets and then the one above it should be centered. And just make sure that it is centered and in place and it's solid. You might have to make sure you press down on all sides, but it should not have any give and that tear shouldn't be wiggling. Also a side note, those gray discs that are the water reservoirs in each of the tiers. Those gray discs will be in all of the tiers except the first one. The first one gets the watering from this top water reservoir. And if you notice, yeah. so there's multiple holes all around, including the center hole. Just make sure when you put this on, so there's tabs that need to be lined up. And again, just press and make sure that it is set. Okay, it feels like it is in place. So we will take this outside and we will fill the water reservoir with water so it can get a good soaking. You'll know when you give it a good soaking when the water drips out of that plastic hose at the bottom. And I will show you that as well. So the beauty of these green stalks and what I love the most about it is the water reservoir. So I happen to have a easy access to a hose that's nearby. So I'm just bringing the hose up here and I'm going to fill the water reservoir. If you don't have easy access to a hose, or you can fill up your bucket um, you know, a two gallon or a five gallon bucket of water. I know it can be heavy, but you can fill that up and then just pour it in this reservoir. So this is all I do. So the water now is reaching the top. So it's actually at the very top. I went above the, the line. But I can hear it trickling down. I have the tube connected down here and I will know that it is completely full when water starts running out of the tube. Do any of you have green stocks and what experience do you have with them? I would recommend anybody to get a green stock if you have limited space because it is approximately a one square foot area is all that it takes up. So if you have limited space, this is a great way to garden. If you, even though I have a lot of space in my yard, I like to have some things easy access and close to the house. So this is perfect for me to have and up against the house and it's away from everything. And it, again, it doesn't take up much space. It looks neat. I got the, I would call it taupe, but I don't know what they technically call the color. There's a couple different colors that you can choose from, but I wanted it to match the house. So um, this was the closest color I could find. I love it. It looks great. If you have experience with green stocks, please feel free to share in the comments below and show me pictures of what you have planted in your green stocks. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can use the code that I have linked below and you will get $10 off your purchase of $75 or more. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Until next time, thank you for watching.